to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Saturday, July 3rd, the Fantasy Footballers. Saturday? I always, like, I'm never 100% sure when I should be using the uh, It's Football Time place for other things. Like, not often, like, I mean, not too often. It, that's exactly how I feel. It's a special, it is a sacred place of the intro. What were you thinking there? It's you almost, Saturday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's one to leave off. Okay. You oh, made the right call. Man. I don't oh, know. Geez. I don't know because it's, <laughs> it's the this, first is Saturday a special, show. this is a special marker of the season. This says to the Foot Clan, things are getting hot and heavy. <laughs> We're going from two shows to three shows a week. Get back in. Let's get ready for the 2021 season. It's Saturday. So many lawns are being cut right now. I don't even know if that's true cuz it's oh, like Oh, it's it's true. It's Independence Day weekend. So maybe people are like yeah, traveling. You got to you got to look sharp. Got to have the when the family comes over, you can't have that overgrown hedge. No, that's embarrassing. And uh Imagine the father-in-law seeing that. Oh man. <laughs> Still a little boy, that one. I It's a lot of yard to take care of. I did think Is that, that uh, you have a pooper <laughs> scooped or what? I did think that your uh, sunscreen shimmy was what let the Foot Clan know things were getting hot and heavy. Oh, yeah. I mean, that let that's a different hot and heavy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we do have a Saturday show right here, right now. Three shows a week, all July. And then um, next level, daily shows oh. from August through December. <laughs> Are you ready, Mike? Uh, no. No, I'm not. That's why you're leaving for several days? Yeah, I'm out of here. The league. Uh, but we, we'll get into the mailbag today, have a good quick question to talk about as you mow your lawn out there. Mm -hmm. See, in Arizona, we do not, <laughs> we do not have lawns No, you, you, spray, you spray down the turf Yes, because otherwise it's way too hot to stand on. Yeah, there's a lot of um, heat strategy that happens in Arizona during the summer, and a lot of it revolves around how do you get from your back door to your pool without third-degree burns? Right. It's usually flip-flops. Right. That's usually the answer, but you don't want them to melt, also, and sometimes that happens. High knees. Oh, high, high knees. knees and fast feet. That's the only way if and you're you, barefoot. You don't want the little kids to run out to the pool because then they can't get the gate open, and they're just dancing with their feet yeah. at the gate, so you got to keep the gate I've open. I've come out many a time with them just hugging the gate. Just, just, oh, yeah, they're up on it? Yeah, like, like a little koala in. on the on They'd the wall. rather be attached to the steel Well, gate. once they grab <laughs> it with so their nice. hands, they, they're, oh, they're, they're soldered they're, in. They cannot be removed. <laughs> My whole pool gate is just lined with children. It's just flesh. <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> All right, quick question for the day. By the way, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I recommend you do that. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers as well. Join the foot.com as a community. If you're looking to get into a league with good people, so that could be a local league, a an online league, dynasty, redraft, whatever the case may be, definitely check out jointhefoot.com because you get access to Foot Clan leagues and you get to meet great people. And there are some really long running leagues with with people that have met on there. and um, I actually met a fella on my San Diego trip this last week who was telling me, a shout out to Ian, uh, who was telling me about the league that they they all met. They're all across the country. I think one of them's in Denmark is what, like they're, oh, they're this is a global show. Um, and they met three years ago. They've got several leagues now together. They are all like the best of friends. He says it's the best league he's ever been a part of. They all met on footclanleagues.com. It's, it's just, it's a great place to meet people who have the same attitude towards fantasy football where it's, we take it very serious and we want to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's the goal here is to actually like just have a great outlet in life. And uh, yeah, so that that was that was awesome. Yeah, it's cool to hear. And one or two bad managers can make a league stinky. Mm -hmm. And so replace them is what we're saying. Even if you're not joining a new league, this is the time of year to go find somebody that wants to play. All right, quick question: What are some fun and unique ways to determine draft order? I have a new one. 
Oh, okay. Oh. Well, we we did we put it out on social, so we have some of the most popular answers. But we'll let Jason go first. So one, this comes from one of those popular answers. Oh, but it's well, but <laughs> it's it more is more of a copying. <laughs> so you have one. It's an amendment. It's an amendment. Okay. So okay. one of the popular answers that I saw on there that I really liked was to get everybody together, at Dave and Buster's, and you see who can get the most tickets. Right. Oh, now here's the thing. You have to have a dollar cap, though. Well, sure. No, you've, no got, you've got to. Everybody's got to have even spending here for sure. Yeah. You can't just be like, well, that guy's going to win. He's been here for 16 hours straight <laughs> since they opened and he's shutting the place down. No, but my point is like some of these games are still skill based. You know, who can hit the most basketball eh, not shots much anymore? But yeah. but I think you've got to go. You got to all gather around and go to the big jackpot. Push the button. Spin the wheel? Spin the wheel type of game. You get everybody together for a dinner and a time, and then everyone gets one spin, and that's the order. How many tickets did you get on the wheel? And boom, bam. That's just a fun event, and it's completely random. No skill. Which is what you need, and I, I actually like that. If you're on a random... Uh, now, Mike, hold on. I just got thought about something. We have some other ones that we can share, but I just thought about this. Okay. You have been very public lately, Mike, about how much you despise gender reveal parties. Yes. And that is, you know, just gathering everybody together yes. for this single moment in time. For fun times. For a good time with people to see whether you're having a boy or a girl. Um, uh, now, how do you feel about gathering your league for one of these very brief uh, selections of your draft order? I'm 100% for it. There is a very big difference in your two <laughs> scenarios. In uh, this one we're talking about in the Fantasy Football League, I am a part of it. I am selecting something for myself. So if everybody where, was having a baby when they sh gathered, sure. you're fine. Well, it, I mean, I'm fine for mine. I don't care about your uh, baby. That's the problem. Mm, that, is, that is the problem. The problem is the gender reveal is that, that it's. It, I'm not a part of this. I have nothing to do with this. And then I just go, oh, look, it's blue. Hey, right. But when I'm, when I'm uh, working on my draft Do you feel spot, joy for others at times in your life? Why? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of spent energy – uh, unnecessarily. <laughs> um, okay, so some other suggestions people brought up. We've heard the video game simulation one, so like Royal Rumble. Um, yeah, or you Smash know, Bros. Or Smash Brothers where you – but you're again, you're not playing. You're watching mm -hmm. a randomized event, and you each get a different character. Uh, there have been people that have done the Kentucky Derby. That one's I'm, – I'm sure it's very fun to watch. It's tougher because there's a – Heavy odds on favorite every year. Yeah, I mean, it'll be random. You're kind of, I guess that's okay, because if it's random to choose the horses, then beyond that, they're still surprised. So, I mean, a random selection right. is the same thing. And then March Madness, is people have done that as well. It's, uh, but you're you're past that opportunity. Yeah, what about, if you didn't run it. somebody said the National Spelling Bee, which <laughs> okay. I think is hilarious if you were attached to a kid spelling words. <laughs> that would take forever. Yeah, the the way we do it, and it's it's low key, but it is so entertaining. So we we've talked about our our system for uh, this isn't picking for draft spot. We do our lottery for uh, our keepers, but it's uh, there was a time period where there would just be you know three colors, and we'd we'd pick one, and that player would go back to the draft. I think there is something so fun about just there's. If you're in a 12 person league, there's 12 colors and then and the inverse standings of uh so like if you got last, you get to pick first and just go on down the line and then at the end you choose your fate. You just you choose your own fate, but I mean it's still random and it seems it it's it feels really understated, but it's just so much because fun. Because you get so mad at yes. yourself. You had no I idea. I know I should have taken red. Yeah, you had no idea that blue was 11. But you did it to yourself, and that that really adds a nice level of um, you know self hatred. Yes, right, which is mix. key to fantasy football. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, Brooks brought up the uh, playlist shuffle, where every manager picks a different song. You enter all the songs into a playlist. You hit shuffle, and boom. Okay, if you're doing like a if you got a party going on, that'd be fun because yeah. then you hear your song yes. song come on. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to do it in reverse order too, so it leads up to the number one pick. Yeah, some people said using Cameo to have Hall of Famers or people to choose your order for you. Uh, that we have whoever brings the best snacks to draft night chooses the order. Team Hefty Boys. I get first pick. <laughs> All 
All right. Uh, well, you have, you'd have to vote on it, though, right? Yeah, you, you would. You yeah, don't, you don't just bring wait. a snack and declare, I have the best snack. Yeah, but what's your vote going to be? <laughs> yeah. You want the draft, but that one might not work. <laughs> Your vote's we, gonna, we have a 12-way tie. I guess you just can't <laughs> vote for yourself. Okay, yeah. I mean, that would go. make that there would fix go. it. It has to be blind voting as well. Yeah. With a okay. blindfold? Yeah. Blind taste test. Well, you can't know who brought the snack because otherwise you would vote. F- you're voting for the person. You got to, like, hide the snacks in a room. Yeah, except Jason would be over there. Oh, man, have you guys had these wings? They are to <laughs> die for. They're so good. I like Who how brought Jason, these? Jason just wants to hide the snacks in a room. Yeah. And then he'll be in charge of the And they'll be like, the wait, snacks. nobody brought snacks? That's right. <laughs> We're picking no out of a hat. brought anything. And if you haven't checked out the draft analyzer, it came out on Thursday for the UDK Plus. And um, it's spectacular. I and it, see it's really going to be more fun. With all the redrafts in August, and we're going to keep adding features to it, but uh, you can try it out now if you have a dynasty team. If you want to just manually input some players, if you want to do a mock draft and say how how this mock draft go, yes. So uh, check that out and share your grades with us on uh, the old Twitter sphere. We'd mm-hmm. love to see how you've constructed a roster, and uh, we also have it'll tell you which baller likes your team the most as well. So, all right. Quick reminder, head to fantasychamps.com if you need some hardware for your league. And you do. Which uh, right now they're running a promotion. If you buy a championship belt or a championship trophy and you put in the code free ring, they'll send you a free uh, $59 championship ring. So this is a good way to get a trophy for your league and then get a ring for yourself or for the champion of that year. Like the trophy can travel, but the rings can be like a permanent Mm -hmm. trophy that you get to. I mean, we have them in our office. We display them. That's what we do. We have rings for ourselves and a trophy that is one for the whole league. Otherwise, uh, yeah, so fantasychamps.com. Use the code free ring for that, and let's get into the mailbag. 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 If you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's kick it off with a voicemail question. What's up, ballers? Uh, Keeper question, would you rather keep Metcalf in the fourth or TJ Hawkinson in the tenth? Thanks. Oh, okay. I'm I'm keeping DK Metcalf in the fourth round. I know you're you're not getting the the major value. Where's where's Metcalf going right now? Probably third round? Metcalf right now is ADP. Probably second second. round. Probably second. Okay. So that's a pretty good value. Not, not, Not too bad, especially when you're looking at the curve of the value of a, a second round pick. I mean, I'm, I have hockey leaves, uh, TJ Hawkinson from the Detroit Lions. I have him ranked very high. I think his potential to be the breakout, uh, tight end of the year. It's strong. Like the, the receiving options are weaker there. They're, they're brand new. Uh, but I, I don't, it, to bet losing out on DK Metcalf for a, a two round value. I'm not going to, place that bet on Hawkinson. Jason, you're far most, uh, the far most bullish on Hawkinson of the three of us. Yes, so I know that my answer will be the same for all of us, which is it's clearly DK Metcalf okay, okay. who you need to take here. I love Hawkinson's outlook, his perspective, but you can draft him later. It doesn't matter. Getting a value on a true game changer that you already know is like he's an elite wide receiver that'll win you weeks. You've got to take uh, Metcalf here and then and then figure out tight end, uh, a less important position for fantasy uh as the draft goes on uh, i'm gonna surprise you here what no i'm not I'm oh wow. I, was, I was blown away i was like what i had to say it but no it's metcalf all right this question comes in instagram jeff sperano says stafford versus Tannehill in a dynasty league who would you take between ryan Tannehill and matthew stafford in a dynasty league Tannehill is almost 33 stafford is wait what uh stafford is just past that mark. Third. Tannehill is like a, like six months younger? Yeah. Did you not think that? No. No, I did not. I probably would have guessed. You've deleted the Dolphin years? I would have guessed that Stafford was older. Yeah. Oh, I would have guessed oh. Stafford was. Oh, you was, thought it was a bigger I would, gap. I thought it would be like two years. Yeah. But, it's it, just, but it is not. This just feeds back into why did Detroit get rid of a great quarterback. But um, they did. So wow. What do you think, though, for the for the dynasty outlook? I think... 
So age isn't really a concern here. No, a- no. A- outlook for the th- team. They're they're half a year uh, apart, and the question is who's going to have a better career from this point forward, and and not really a better career because that includes like wins and losses, but more fantasy points. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with Tannehill because when I look at 2021, um, which I think both teams are set up for success right now. I have Tannehill as a much better fantasy option. He's been, you know, we talked about this. I, I just brought him up recently as a value on uh, one of our shows. He was the quarterback uh, three from, uh, you know, right. after their bye all last season. The the season before, once he got the start, he was the quarterback two. We know he could be out outstanding for fantasy. And I realize Julio is older. And so that will go away at some point. So maybe you can make the argument that Sean McVay and the trust in the offensive system that's always been great with him will give a longer uh, lifespan to Stafford. But also, Stafford has a major back issue here, which, you know, like, uh, he's healthy. I hope he has a great long career. But that kind of matters for an aging quarterback. So I'm, I'm going Tannehill, but it's not one of those slam dunks. Well, I, I like the receivers Tannehill's attached to. Uh, like you said, age isn't the equation, but we've seen – the consistency of Tannehill in this system. The best wide receivers in the equation are both on the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, it's easy to say, hey, maybe Stafford has five nice years there, but you just can't see that far ahead. They're going to have to have some turnover at their wide receiver position Mm -hmm. as well in the coming years with, you know, Robert Woods and company getting older. So I think it is Tannehill pretty decisively for me. Uh, Follow-up question about Robert Woods, though, Mike. Uh, Instagram question, what is Woods' dynasty value? He's uh, 29. He he signed a four-year, $65 million extension before the 2020 season. But it just feels like we might not know in the fantasy community exactly how to feel about him. I think that he is still very safe. Uh, Robert Woods, the, the way that his production has come thus far in his career is not I'm I'm a young elite athlete. Like he's a good wide receiver. So th- that's the type of skills that can translate as you get older because you don't lose that one step of your speed and now all of a sudden DBs can can yeah, hang it, with you. It reminds me more of like the possession style like Derek Mason was in in Baltimore yeah, or like Bolden. Yeah, Absolutely. Anquan Bolden was who came to my mind. Just a good solid route runner. You can have a longer career. Who's tough, got good hands and is in the spot that the quarterback wants him to be in. Um, so I agree. I mean, he's got a nice contract extension. So I feel like if you're looking at a three-year window, which is what I try to look at for fantasy, I think he's going to be, for the next three years, a, a top 20 wide receiver. Would you go trade a first-round pick to next That's year's a great draft question. for Robert Woods if you think he has a three-year window? Man, that is a really, really good yes. question. I think you can make an argument for it, but there are certain times of the year where a first round is worth so much where I feel like you might be able to even get more than Woods. Um, yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. The, the value of Robert Woods Well, maybe, is, it's, maybe it's your first for Woods and a uh, third, or for Woods and a second. The value for Woods is far greater for the dynasty team that he is on than, uh, than, him, than his trade market. I, I mean, even when Woods, you know, two years ago, like, even then his trade market was still, hey, we – how many – are we sure? Are we sure that Robert Woods is going to keep doing this? And we people ask themselves that question every single year. Are you sure Robert Woods is actually that good? And, yeah, so I think he is worth the first. You may not have to trade that to get him. Uh, but at the, I wouldn't be trading Robert Woods away because I don't think you can get fair value. Will Fuller or Robert Woods in a dynasty league? Oh, brother. I'll just keep bringing that uh, Oh, brother. I'm going to take Robert Woods there. I think that you can argue that the ceiling is higher with Will Fuller, and he's obviously a little bit younger. Um, but I am so much more confident in what Robert Woods is. I'm usually the type of guy that I would rather have um, the known commodity than the hopeful upside that will probably let me down, and then all of a sudden I'm middle of the pack in my league. And Fuller is... It was it, it was a one year deal for it was, yes, the Dolphins, correct. right? So Will Fuller is currently betting on himself and Tua, and yeah, and Tua, and it could that could turn into a massive contract where with his pick of the litter, or two years younger, it could flame out. Yeah, uh, it it's tough. I think part of what makes the Fuller situation more confusing for dynasty players and in redraft 
is the one year deal. It is not knowing like this market for wide receivers, like Kenny Galladay got paid. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was rough for everybody else. So you don't know if like, it's easy to say Will Fuller bet on himself, right? Oh, I'm going to go have a great year. But maybe it was like, I'm going to get the most money yeah, I actually, on a one-year deal. And it's not about fit to get the next contract. It's just I, think that's, I didn't have as many options. I think that is what it is. When when Will Fuller signed his contract, there it was not a, a, a strong market because of the cap situation and all these wide receivers started signing these one-year deals because it was all they could get and the teams are going well i'll be able to afford them next year we we've got cap trouble this year all right let's go to another voicemail question here hey guys this is brian from north carolina big fan of the show got a quick dynasty question for you i think i have a pretty good team right now that's going to be able to contend for a couple of years is there a time that you could actually do too many moves and and mess your team up by trying to overthink it look forward to hearing what you got to say on this one bye guys <laughs> yeah oh yeah yes yes uh if you why are you trading we've had are you case studies of this in our uh, dynasty oh blah 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 yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're blah, just, blah. just gonna put him on blast uh, yeah you got to put him on blast because he's he's had a good team at times he and, and he it, can't stay steady he's got to make moves to be fair to him he recognizes the problem well, that's true he, he, he just chooses not to address it because trading is fun yes especially dining uh, trading in a dynasty league is fun and you can do it whenever you want it can be April. There is no football going on. There's really no football in sight. You know, like, yeah, you know what I could get? I can go get a little fantasy fix. I could go check out my team. I could go make a trade, spice things up. But yes, if you're trading simply because you're bored and not because it's okay, th this is a this is something I have identified that I have to repair on my team, or this is something I have identified that this is a, a peak value time that I can extract by trading this player. The stakes can be very high in Dynasty in terms of um, something going south for you on a trade. So, like, it is fun to shoot your shot, right, and to identify somebody that you believe is going to break out or is going to be great. But then you could have a situation where, like, I should have moved James Robinson, right? Like, before the draft, I should have committed and made a move. Like, that was a situation where I waited. I tried to be patient. It was the wrong move. I thought about it. I made a couple offers. Wish I tried harder, but if, but you had identified this is a this is a pivotal moment of his value can either skyrocket or it can plummet, and you would you had identified that so it wasn't like, it wasn't trading for trading. Yeah, sake. you're not like hey, I I should do something. Maybe I should trade James Robinson. There's a certain type of trading arrogance that can be crafted within oneself, mm -hmm. where you believe any trade offer or tr any trade situation, you're you're going to be the one getting the better end of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you win every trade that you make the minute after you make it, and that's just not actually Unless the truth. Unless the poll that you throw on Twitter turns out the wrong way, and oh, then you yeah. completely change yep. your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, it is funny, the level of validation that can come in a... Like, in our league of record, so many times somebody throws a trade, they do a trade, they're, oh, ner it, they're nervous. This is it, it, One of the things in the league of record is immediately you make the trade, and then you go through... <laughs> I don't know why. Throw it on a poll. You go throw it on the poll to either validate what you have done or to shame the other person. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's some psychological problems going on in most <laughs> fantasy leagues. Or uh, Jason and I, we've made trades in our dynasty league and thrown them up on Twitter and, and let the people decide. And what's great is that the people deciding, the league deciding, no bearing whatsoever on how they play. It's irrelevant. No. But you feel like you won before you've seen anybody play or you've lost. And they go sideways. I mean, they go really, really sideways. We've seen teams do that as well. I've made plenty of bad moves. I do trade a lot, but people have stopped trading with me. So, uh, Instagram question, Yoohoo. Do you guys prefer... I, I love Yoohoo's. Six or four... <laughs> do you prefer Yoohoo's? Do you prefer Yoohoo's or water? Use. Okay. Uh, do you want water or chocolate water? Uh, let me think. Chocolate water, please. I used to love Yoohoo's. I literally had Which one isn't... on my drive back from San Diego. No, you oh, did not. In the glass bottle, baby. You had a Yoohoo? I did. I saw it. I was like, you can my only vacation's get those. not over yet. You can only get those at convenience stores that are stuck in the 90s. Right. It was in between Arizona and California. It was out in the middle of nowhere. I don't. Kn I looked everywhere on that thing for a date. I mean, I was like, I couldn't find one. I'm like, well, we're okay. There, there is 
Chocolate and, water doesn't expire. There, right. is, there is a possibility, but I've never had a Yoohoo in my life. <gasps> There's a possibility it for is a great possible. moment for you. I don't know. Chocolate water really does not sound appetizing. <laughs> I know you're very staunch in your support of, what, could I have water or chocolate water? I'm like, I regular water what sounds much better than chocolate water well it my my belief there is more mocking what you who is it's like a chocolate milk drink except it's because it is it's, it's chocolate like a water. watered down. it's not dairy there's no dairy in it yeah and we did have cans of them in the studio once because we ordered them online and jason drank a lot of them i did they were good but um i do prefer <laughs> the glass bottle well yeah because glass bottle of anything is way better yeah uh, you who says, or I mean, Instagram question says, you who do you prefer six or four point passing touchdowns and why six? Um, because I think that that's what, you know, quarterbacks are very important and, uh, everybody else gets six for a touchdown and it just feels a little bit more balanced. Um, but it doesn't really make that big a difference because it's, you know, it does the same thing for the whole position. So it's, I think, I think that six point versus four point gets overblown sometimes well it's the, the biggest it's the difference. running quarterbacks yeah. in the four point that it, distorts them even more it's not a a huge difference but a yeah when when quarterbacks and now we're seeing it more and more they start carrying the ball into the end zone and you get two extra points it to me that feels bad it's oh like, it, what I, are you talking about my quarterback my pat my my quarterback threw a touchdown. How is that not just as you valuable too. for uh, for their team? And why should I only get four points and your quarterback ran one in and they got six? I won't even let either of you be on the side of four points. I would not permit that because it's another avenue in which like, you're already frustrated that rushing quarterbacks get a point per 10 rushing yes. versus giving them point per 25. Well, you know, when you have six point touchdown leagues you give touchdown centered matt ryan's a chance at competing in fantasy a touchdown is a touchdown yeah and you give them a shot like somebody that does throw the ball a lot more at least can compete week to week um so i think that's why we all prefer it mm -hmm. yeah all right uh twitter question from joseph can mike pick a random <laughs> tattoo of his and explain it we are also on YouTube, so okay. Mike, that, that might be better for the YouTubers. Uh, which random tattoo? Which what? Uh, which we tattoo that it? you guys can see? My biggest right there. Okay. M music. What is that? It's just that's a music is my weapon. Oh, all right. I mean that. Oh, and, and that was with the soldier. that one's pretty. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. What does it mean? It means Break it, down. it means that I'm a musician and that my weapon of choice is music. Is your words or is your <laughs> it's, riffs? Is music. Uh. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I have a lot of none of my I see tattoos. A spaceship. How yeah. many tattoos total would you say are on your two arms? Because I can't tell where like one's a new one or that's one's it, you. You reach a point in your tattoo career where you you don't say, "Well, how many tattoos do you have?" You just say, "I have tattoos." Right, and that's where you're at. Yeah. Okay. I, how many tattoos? I, my arms are covered. My ribs are covered. Uh, yeah. I guess Jason was just talking about oh the spaceship. Oh, the spaceship, but. Uh, That's a hard it's, one it's, to get on. Yeah, it's hard camera. to show it. But that was um, the my right arm is all traditional. Is the, that's the art style of the tattoos, and a very very common traditional tattoo is a sailboat, or not, but like a almost like a pirate ship, old fashioned look. It's really really common, and I like them a lot. But I was like, that's not who I am. Like, so what mode of transportation? The sailboat of the of the stars. Yeah, and it was like, <laughs> oh. Like I'll, I thought it was a neat idea for for personalize it to me. It's it's the ship idea, except it is more for my personality. I'm a science and space enthusiast, so I went with the uh, the old school space shuttle. Nice. Oh. Najee Harris question from Inst oh even better on Instagram. You have any Najee tattoos yet? Not yet. All right, I got a space saved. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> uh, what's the highest you're comfortable with drafting Najee Harris in a redraft league? Second round? Would oh, you yeah. take him in the second round? Yeah, yeah, I would easily take him in the high second round. Yeah, the second round is is the answer for me. I, I when I look at the guys going in the first, I would take them over him. And they're the, the, the question is what what wide receivers would you take over Najee? Metcalf? I would take yeah, I would take Metcalf. I would take Ridley. I would Michael take Thomas? um 
I would probably take Michael Thomas, and obviously the the guys above really? that. You take Diggs Michael Thomas. Hopkins. I am higher on Michael Thomas, I think, than than you two are. are you? I believe. I thought I was the highest. I uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I believe in him. I I think, and I I still have Taysom Hill as the quarterback. I think he only has room to go up if Jameis Winston becomes the starter. But he's update. I am in fact the highest on Michael Thomas. Okay, what are our Jason's rankings? Jason's been the most vocal though. Six and seven. I speak with my actions and my rankings. Where do I have Andy. him? Twelve. Yeah. You you hate. Michael so you Thomas. have him not, six. I have him seven. Yeah. Not just me. I mean, I I I don't know the exact league format, but I I saw he went in the fifth round of some sort of dynasty draft. The fifth round of a dynasty draft. What I are have, we doing? People? I have a new, it was probably a super flex, but still okay, fifth round. Okay. I have a new value pick uh, <laughs> for the, our next value show. But uh, yeah, I would take Najee over Michael Thomas. I would take Najee over Michael Thomas. Calvin Ridley was the only wide receiver Jason mentioned that I would probably take over Najee. Uh, Twitter is kind of a follow up. <laughs> it comes in with the title of Winston MVP season. So if you want to know where the opinion is, <laughs> but but read the Twitter handle. Yeah, at Breeze the Goat Nine. <laughs> oh man, this guy loves the Saints. <laughs> Says what makes you think Taysom Hill will start okay. over Jameis for the Saints? <laughs> this is a great follow up question. Talk about timely here. <laughs> this is this is very funny because I'm project I'm projecting Jameis Winston. To be the starter. You two right. both have Taysom Hill. And I can easily say, explain why you're projecting Taysom Hill. Yeah, the reason is because last year, and you're a, you're a Saints fan, you, you might remember this. <laughs> Drew Brees got injured. And on that roster was Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill. And they said, which guy should be my starting quarterback? And they went with Taysom Hill. That's why I believe they will go with Taysom Hill again. <laughs> and, you know... They might change. They might come into an offseason and say, well, I didn't like what we did, and I didn't like our offense, and Jameis Winston has LASIK, and he's so much better now. Uh, but that is my thought, is that, that we usually when we see a team's actions versus whatever is said by the beat reporters, actions, um, as Mike just said, they speak louder than words. That's right. And um, their actions in pretty much an identical situation – already picked him so that's why i'm i'm going with uh Taysom. yeah i think it's 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 getting closer to a toss-up for me on where i think they'll end up um Taysom certainly i think impressed in his opportunity but it, i don't know yeah, if i believe they, he was three and one yeah i don't know if they'll view it as the best ceiling for their team that's kind of where i'm curious Although, i think the I'm, I'm just vetting it but that loss yeah he lost to the eagles Mm -hmm. That's a bad loss on your record. Well, that was that was the first. I believe that was the first Eagles game with, with uh, Hertz? Jalen Hurts. So it was kind of a surprise. I think they were. Um, All right, that's very shocked. Surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Nate Jensen, eighty-five. <laughs> Is Joe Mixon a buy or sell in full PPR dynasty? Oh, a buy. He's twenty-four years old. Four-year, forty-eight million dollar extension before last season. I'm with you on that. I would say he's on the buy side. Yeah, and I am not. I am not a Joe Mixon truther, uh, or or backer. But his opportunity this year is absolutely tremendous. You have Samaj P. Ryan behind him, and then uh, uh, I think it was Chris Evans, the other the the kid they drafted in like the fifth round. The uh, if this is Joe Mixon's backfield to be not a not a Christian McCaffrey level 80 90 percent of the snaps but mo for the most part a three down skill set three down type of a workhorse running back how successful will that be that remains to be seen because we've we've seen Mixon be incredible we've seen Mixon be inefficient uh it so I but I think that this offense is going to be solid so a three down running back inside of a solid offense that's that's what you want for fantasy football Instagram question from Tyler. It says, yo, 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 ballers. Yo, yo. yo. Two-part question. Oh, cheater. Oh, man. How do you decide on tier-based rankings and who fits into which tier? And do you group positions together in tiers or keep them separate? So uh, we, we sit down, the three of us, uh, together, and we go through the, the actual rankings and decide exactly where we believe each tier drop is. 
Um, so that that's kind of how it, it is a manual process um, that we do by hand, and then we do have it set up to adjust for scoring uh, format. So if you then go in, it it will um, factor in how you score these players. Um, and then as far as how you use them, one, you know, tier three wide receiver does not necessarily mean, uh, that they are better than a tier four running back or vice versa. It's just about, and this is the great part about tier based drafting is that you, you know, it's, it's almost like you should take the numbers out. These are just groups of players and you can see how many are left at each position that are about the same quality that you're going to get. Um, and it, it's actually an indicator of what position you should draft when you're on the clock. So people are always like, well, uh, you know, I, I, how do you circle, cycle all these in and, and know which position? This is how you decide what position to draft. You look at how many people are left in the tiers that you like and say, ah, oh, there's plenty of this tier of quarterback left. I don't need that yet. I can still wait. I can grab the last, you know, oh man, running back and wide receiver. There's really only one or two of wide receivers for running backs. Let me grab the last guy of the tier that I like in, in position X. And those are available in the ultimate draft kit. That's right. That's right. Um, picking a question here. Instagram question from uh, Zonda Panda. Xanda Panda, uh, around what age would a wide receiver in Dynasty be considered end of career? Well, I mean, it depends on – why are you laughing? I, I didn't hear any of the question because all I could think of was Zonda Panda. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. But um, That's a good band name. Zonda Panda? Yeah. Yeah. They'd be an, definitely an EDM. For sure. Well, probably um, one of the mask wears. Let's too. hear this. Let's hear this question. Have you guys seen? <laughs> have you guys seen Zonda Panda? Zonda Panda, or yeah. it could be a snack. Zonda Panda. Yeah. Okay. A well, snack, like a dessert type of a snack, like a like a like pound a, cake. Do you have a something? slice of a Zonda Panda? I was thinking like a, a hostess. A, a hostess would make Oof. a Zonda Panda. <laughs> okay, I'd eat one of those <laughs> for sure. Uh, let's hear that question. Oh, yeah. What age do you consider the end of a career to be in Dynasty for a wide receiver? For a wide receiver, for me, it's 31. And that's a generic, generic answer that does not apply to everyone. Like right? Adam like, Thielen right now? So Is Adam, his career over? Uh, no, I, I think he's got one good year left. So you take it on a case-by-case -case basis, right? I don't ever just assign – I say 31 is like the generic number. Sure. But I don't ever assign that to someone, and it's a <laughs> death now. Thielen's 30, so oh. I mean, you're, you're pretty much perfect So then there. I So then I, I know that. Um, <laughs> You know, Larry Fitzgerald played way later. Julio looks to be great. You know, I'm fine going over that or below that number. But generally speaking, wide receiver as a whole, 31 is the age where it, it precipitously drops off. Great vocabulary. Zonda Pond. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Anderson question from Deport 11. Why is Robbie Anderson's ADP so low? That's a great question. I believe... Here's the thing. I really, really like Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel this year. Like I'm, I'm. Are you remembering that Curtis is not on the team anymore? Yes, but okay. that's but All that's right. why. I mean, they're they're the, his leaving has I feel like opened up a great path forward for for both of those guys, and I think they're both screaming values right now. Okay, makes my dynasty team feel better. I mean, Robbie Anderson should be he should have a thousand yards easily again. Now, how many? touchdowns will he get being that really short you know, close to the line of scrimmage for his average depth of target that remains to be seen because you can't even DJ Moore with his huge a dot couldn't get touchdowns last year last have you year, ever seen DJ Moore and Zonda Ponda together no I think DJ Moore open for him the last, the last oh, oh D okay like DJ Moore's on the ones and the twos Zonda Ponda's just got a big we are panda helmet. this train is, um is jumping the shark look <laughs> Here's 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 what I think about jump in the shark station train. Robbie Fish. Anderson, Robbie Anderson has proven on the NFL field he can be a downfield yes. home run awesome electric wide receiver. And last year he proved he can be a possession guy, yeah. 136 targets. I believe they have an upgraded quarterback. The team believes they have an upgraded quarterback. Now that's not I'm not safe. sure they do. Well, they uh, they literally paid money and capital to make the move. So I'm 
I'm positive they believe they they hope they are willing to pay to say that to get Teddy Bridgewater out of you there. You really think no, that? No question they believe it's an upgrade because they pursued – this was a, we need to fix quarterback and we can do it in the draft at this pick or we can go and get Sam Darnold. We believe we can get enough Man. out of Sam Darnold. Carolina and and Denver. They made – they passing shot their shot, on, man. Pa passing on Justin Fields is going to look very foolish for, for both of them. But you, So, Jason, you really believe that Sam Darnold is – Better than Teddy Bridgewater? I do. I, I think he has more upside to the system that they want to run than Teddy Bridgewater had. Would you agree that he has more downside? I would agree that he has more okay. downside, sure. Um, but you you got a guy who had 136 targets last year. Now Curtis Samuel's off the team with a possible quarterback upgrade. He can do it short and he can do it long. Just because he did it short last year does not mean that's the only thing he can do. So to me, he's just a talented wide receiver. In a good position. If he had more touchdowns last year, his ADP wouldn't be anywhere remotely close to what it is now. Exactly. If he had... Yeah, same for DJ Moore. Yeah, if he had finished... If either had finished the way they... Well, I guess DJ Moore started slow, but Robbie Anderson was a top guy for the beginning of the year, and had he finished stronger, I think you would see that narrative playing out in fantasy of Curtis Samuel's leaving and Robbie Anderson's going to have even more of an opportunity to, to exploit this defense, but... Teddy Bridgewater... Uh, last year was 7.6 yards per attempt. Sam Darnold was 6.1. Remind me who Sam Darnold's um, head coach was last year? It was Adam I don't know Gates. if that's a great yeah. argument, though, Mike, because I'm guessing if you look at Teddy Bridgewater's career before last year, you're going to see disastrous numbers. My, my point is that Sam Darnold was uh, worse than garbage last year. Yes, he was, he last was, year he was. He was horrifically bad. He averaged... Uh, under a passing touchdown per game. That is impressive. Yeah, impressive and, and stuff. I will stand corrected. Bridgewater was a 7.3, 7.2, even in his Minnesota days. So it did go up to a career high. Then, well, it, it, that's not high. That, that was my point. No, it's super low. Yeah, that, and that Darnold was far worse. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think Darnold is better than Teddy Bridgewater. Might not be. And if, if he's not, then they, they screwed the But pick, I'm not the, the Carolina Panthers, up. nor am I Jason Moore. There you go. S some of my best attributes. <laughs> <laughs> this show. Happy uh, lawn this mowing. This is a Saturday there. show. Instagram question from Nick O'Hare. Are you guys interested in Waddle as a late-round flyer in redraft leagues? He has the potential to see a lot of valuable targets on this team, especially if Tua takes a step forward. Totally fine with it. Would love to add him to my roster late. I'm not really. I think he's going to be a uh, low volume guy who I'm not going to be able to start. I don't trust Tua. You've got Devonte Parker and Will Fuller there, so I don't think the rookie year breakout is in the cards for for Waddle. It, it, yeah, rookie wide receivers, generally speaking, are not my favorite to to target in redraft. Waddle, waddle. But yeah, I mean, well, that's waddle, pretty fun. Is you would get to do that every time he caught the ball. Uh, but there, are, I mean, there's two rookies I'm interested in, in this year with Jamar Chase and then Devontae Smith with his insanely low ADP. I mean, when you're taking a flyer on a rookie wide receiver, take it on Devontae Smith yeah, because it's around the same area of very late in a draft, and I'm, I don't want multiple rookie wide receivers on my redraft. What's team. funny is that there's a chance that you have, like, I'm, a, I'm formally going to put Jen and Waddle into the – potential week one breakouts because you won't have Will Fuller. You're going to have them threatening. I mean, they're, they're working on their damn field. Like two for 80 and a score. Yeah, exactly. Like he could be a legit week one explosion, undrafted late rounds. And that might not be prescriptive for the year, but I wouldn't be surprised if he came out and had a very sure. big role in the offense with no Will Fuller in week one. All right. That's going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thanks for tuning in. Very excited about three a week. For a week, if you're at jointhefoot.com and you get the bonus footcast. Bonus. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you Tuesday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.